Hey everyone, this is your Hair Peace Session with Emily. I'm your host, Emily Mazur, aka Portland Hairstylist. So this COVID thing has been really hard on a lot of people and you think, when is it going to end? And now we're hitting fall. Just last week, I saw one of my favorite clients, Lucy. She's in high school and is so creative, fun, animated, and I love our conversations. And you know what I really love the most? Is after her service is giving her a great big hug. And I want to, but I can't. I am though thankful that I have such a career that I even get to see anybody. So Lucy, I love seeing you and I wish I could give you just a big hug. You know what also the interesting thing is about COVID is more people are doing podcasts. It's pretty cool. Even when I started this one, I never listened to podcasts and now I'm seeing new ones pop up all the time. It's cool to have a different kind of audience, you know, not just a person sitting in my chair, me doing a service on them. But I'm reaching out to individuals that I don't know, where you guys get to hear my story. And I've been reaching out to people in different states, which is pretty cool. And hopefully, I don't know, it'd be neat if other people in different countries listen to this show. The other really cool thing is even with COVID having to stay indoors is because of this podcast and me stepping out of my comfort zone, I get to meet some incredibly talented people and people not from Portland. And I've been craving that. I craved it before COVID. I'm still craving it now. And I'm glad that I can meet people by doing this podcast. In fact, this next guest isn't from Portland. My sponsor of the show, Madonna, creator of Ziba Hub, emailed me connecting us. Brittany Ryan has been a hairstylist for over 15 years in the Huntington Beach area. She is also currently working at Studio 37 and does freelance work. And not only is she mother of two, and not only does she work behind a chair, but she is also a celebrity hairstylist traveling back and forth from Huntington Beach to LA to work for the stars, specifically Jessica Alba. And just recently she became part of Local 706. And I've heard of Local 706 before and I heard that it was very difficult to get into. When searching more about it, I came across their website, www.local706.org. And Local 706 is a union for makeup artists and hairstylists that work in the production of film, television, network broadcasting, commercial, legitimate, theater, and any other place of amusement where Local 706 has a contract. And this is part of Brittany's dream. And she's still striving for more. And you know what the really cool thing about her is? She's nice. You guys, I had a phone call with her before our actual interview, and I later told Madonna, she's doing famous people. She, I mean, she is beautiful. Not like that would matter or anything like that, but she's also incredibly nice. And Madonna said, yeah, I thought you two would hit it off. Here's the interview with celebrity hairstylist and mom, Brittany Ryan. Interview on Saturday, October 3rd of 2020. All right, guys. So I am with Brittany Ryan, a celebrity hairstylist and a mom. And I actually just, was it last week or was it earlier this week? I think it was last week. I feel like all the days are running together. I know. I it was last week. <laughs> yeah, Madonna. So you guys know Madonna. She is my sponsor for the show, Your Hair Peace Session with Emily. And she's also the creator of the app Ziba Hub. And um, every so often she's been sending me these emails. And with the emails, it has a potential guest. And one of the things that I really like about you when I first started talking with you 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 seem so nice and humble. <laughs> I mean, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. And I, I told Mandana that and it was like, I knew you guys would like each other. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I felt the same about you. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So you are, you're from Hun Huntington Beach, right? Yep. Yeah. And born and raised in Huntington. Now you've been doing hair for 15 years. How did you get into doing hair? Um, my mom is a hairstylist. Oh, okay. So I was born and raised in the hair salon. I'd go there, do my homework and sweep up hair. And um, I saw how she was able to juggle that and be a mom at the same time. Oh, yeah. And she was always at all of our sports games and all the things. Oh, so that's really great. And it took me into it. Yeah. Did she, um, did she encourage you to do that? Or was she saying like, hey, get a two-year degree, like at Associates? Or was it something where as you were working with your mom, you're like, oh, you know what? I really want to do this. No, actually, um, I was going to school to be a psychologist. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Which actually is really good for hairstylists. I mean, it's kind of, kind of the same thing. Yeah. But I realized I loved talking to people and I loved helping people, but I didn't love them when I was 18, I didn't love the science of psychology, yeah. you know? So I was like, let's go into hair instead. Um, but what, to answer your question, she was kind of like, just try it all, do what you want to do. She didn't really push me one way or the other. Does she still live in Huntington beach? She does. She does hair literally like on the next street over. Really? Uh-huh. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, she's she's busier than most hairstylists that I know. Does she spe specialize in anything? No, I don't think so, but she literally, she is like triple booked. Holy cow. Five days a week. She's so busy. I, it's insane. Oh, that's great. Does she have an exit plan? Like as in retiring? <laughs> yes, I don't think she's planning. Oh. <laughs> well, that's what, when I first started um, hair school, I was like, hey, Give me all your clients. And she's yeah. like, I'm still working. <laughs> um, all right. So what beauty school did you go to? And is it still around? Um, I went to Golden West College, which is a uh, community college in Huntington Beach. And yeah, I believe it's still around. Did now a lot of the, because we had one Mount Hood that was a community college where you could receive a two years associates as well as getting your cosmetology license. Is that how that was? I don't know exactly. Okay. I do think you can probably use some of the credits oh, okay. for it. But and then when we were talking earlier, did you automatically become an assistant and did an apprenticeship program? Yes. And then yeah, how did you find them? I found them. It was a friend of a friend okay. who referred me to them. And that was two years as an assistant. Was that required yeah. for, you had to be an assistant for two years? Yeah, you needed to go through their program. Okay. It usually took about two years. So I was two years assisting for two different men. And then after that, you were an assistant for two years, but also on the floor taking clients. Yeah. So um, I've always been someone who's always had two jobs, basically. Mm -hmm. Like I just, I need that income. And I felt like I needed the steady income of assisting while okay. I was with my clientele. So I wasn't just like sitting on the floor like waiting. That's actually pretty smart. Do do yeah. a lot of the did a lot of the hairstylists do that or no? No, I think I'm literally the only person I know who assisted for like four years. <laughs> well, and you also probably know a lot of the skills and stuff like that too. Yeah. And like yeah. the clients that they've had. Yeah. And then I can also be like, hey, I have this client tomorrow. Like tell me what I should do. Oh, that's really awesome. Um, now with the apprenticeship program, did they cover all aspects of hair, like learning pixie cuts, men's cuts, balayage, highlights, all that stuff? It was more um, the Dal Sassoon oriented. Oh, so. awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, now you are at Studio 37 Salon. Uh-huh. There for nine years. Yes. What do you specialize? Um, I would say I do both. I do hair cutting and color, but I would okay. say I probably specialize in color. Um, being down in Huntington Beach, we got a lot of blondes. Yeah. Um, so, what about? Oh yeah. Uh, what about doing extensions? Do you do extensions also? Uh huh. Yeah, we do a lot of extensions. Oh, okay. And then now this is where. I'm okay. So this is what we're talking about being a celebrity stylist. 
you are a part of the union yeah. um, to do hair and makeup on film now. Mm -hmm. Now tell me about that journey because you did tell me like being a part of the union takes a lot of years to get there. And then tell me how you balance that with still taking clients at the salon. Um, I don't know. It's such a, I don't know. I feel like I've balanced so many different yeah. things. Um, to be part of a hair and makeup union in LA, it is one of the hardest unions to get into. Some people it takes years and years. You need to have a certain amount of hours mm -hmm. working on a non-union show or a union show within a certain amount of time. Or you can work on a show that is non-union. And then if that show flips and becomes a union show, you become a union. Does that no. happen very often? No, I don't think so. Okay. And I, then, got, I got lucky. Okay. So tell me about that because it was, you had a client that was a producer, right? In your chair. Yes. Um, that is how I got into freelancing and okay. into my celebrity stylist career. Um, which I get, guess ultimately led me to become part of the union, but that's not how I got into the union. Okay. Now for, um, or for them, they had a show and asked you to do the hair and makeup for the show. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, I had this amazing client, she, her and I hit it off like right away. And after I did her hair for a few years, um, she was a producer on a lot of reality TV in okay. LA. She did, um, she produced her on all like the housewives, and she was working on this show called um, Extreme Makeover Weight Loss Edition. Oh, okay. And she one day was like, we have this contestant. I think you guys would really hit it off. She has this huge, like she's been losing weight for a year. I would love for you to do her makeover. Mm. I was like, yeah, I'd love, yeah, of course. Of course, I've always wanted to work on a TV show. So um, she's like, so it's hair and makeup. And I was like, I got this, totally. <laughs> So I literally spent um, a week or two teaching myself makeup because I can do makeup on myself, but I never actually yeah. did it for somebody. Yeah. So I was like, fake it till you make it. Yeah. But and, um, I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say, because you said that you had your client for how many years? I probably was doing her hair for about two years. So what I get from that is that you probably didn't really push her like, hey, I want to do hair for your show or anything Never. right no I think that that's so important I don't like that like I've not that I've heard of clients or stylists doing that but I try to respect my clients in their chair um in my oh, chair yeah. so if they have a profession that I'm really interested or um I don't know something well I don't like doing trade but I I never ask my clients like hey can you give me this deal because I do your hair for this you know yeah never that's um I think I did learn that from my mom like that's their safe spot when they're in your mm -hmm. chair you don't ask for favors you don't talk about yourself like unless it's like in conversation yeah you know like I would never do that I don't do that with any of my celebrities or anything you know that's really cool now, how long were, were you on the show? Um, I want to say the show was about five seasons. I want to say I did about three seasons with them. Now, did you do all the contestants hair and makeup? So the first season was just the one contestant. So okay. we, I did her hair, makeover, her hair makeup makeover, and then I flew to Vegas for her big reveal. Oh, that's we awesome. We re recreated the look, and it was one of the coolest experiences of my life because oh. she just spent a full year losing hundreds of pounds it was her mm -hmm. 21st birthday and it was her huge reveal in Vegas. Oh, that's great. Well, so, uh, I'm sorry. What was the show called? Cause I kind of want to check that out. It was, this was like probably five, no, this was probably like eight years ago. Okay. But it was um, extreme makeover weight loss edition. Oh. And then it turned into just extreme weight loss. Okay. So after that season, I worked on the next two seasons and I did all the contestants. Okay. Um, and then for the extreme makeover for that one uh, client or contestant, mm -hmm. did you only do their makeup twice? So like for the one, one day for the show and then one day in Vegas? No. So um, with reality TV, <laughs> it's not as reality as you think. It's um, anytime she would have to do 
like pickups or she'd have to do interviews, she had the same exact look. So oh, okay. we, recre we recreated that look probably four or five times. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Now, how many years, how did you get into the union? Can you talk about that from first starting with this show? Yeah. So um, once I had this show on my resume, I was able to, I literally reached out to anybody I knew who was doing mm -hmm. celebrity hair. And I was like, I will assist for you. So I would assist on some music videos. I would assist on commercials. I would do anything I can just to build up my resume. And that so was complimentary work or free work that you would do? Sometimes it was free. Sometimes it was not much. I, I didn't care. As okay. long as it was, you know, at that point, I was like, I just need to get on my resume. I'll do, I'll do free. I'll do anything, you know. How just long did you do that for? I mean, I would still do it now if it was a good opportunity, but yeah. I, I did it probably for, probably for like five years. Okay. And then yeah. how did, how did you become part of the union? And the union is called local, is it seven? seven? Okay. I have slight dyslexia. So I was going to say 607, <laughs> no, it's but okay. 706. Okay. Yeah. Local 706. Um, so once I got my portfolio my resume built up I started doing celebrities and I was introduced to Jessica Alba okay who I did her hair for a couple years and um she just started acting again on a tv show and I was doing her hair one day and she was like hey I was like oh when did you start filming again for your tv mm -hmm. show and it's called LA's Finest mm -hmm. um and she was like oh we start like next month she was like, but I don't have anybody to do my hair. Mm. And I was like, oh, bummer, it's a union show. And she's like, it is union, but there is this little catch with the union that if you work with the star of the show, they can get you into the union. Oh my gosh. So she's like, so I can get you into the union. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> like, That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh so I called my husband and I was like, so this is what just happened. And he's like, you have to do it. So um, it wasn't that easy though. I, um, after going back and forth with union producers mm -hmm. and directors on the show, they were able to get me onto the show. I was her hairstylist only. So I wasn't allowed to touch anybody else's hair other than hers. And then is that, after Oh, is that just how it is when you first start in the union? Like they just, you're no, that was just me because I was just the star request. So I was gotcha. able to see her. And I wasn't technically part of the union until I had about 60 days working okay. on set. I think it's 60 days within a couple of years you have to get to get part of the union. Okay. Um, I kind of want to go back to when you're doing freelance work and you were building your portfolio so that you could get celebrity stylists in your chair. How mm -hmm. does that work? Like, do you have, like, where do you send it? And it's like, Hey, celebrity, I'd like to do your hair. So how does that work? <laughs> um, Instagram. Helps. Oh, okay. I literally, like, you think like, you just are like, Hey, I do celebrity hair. I want to do your hair. And they're like, cool. Like I DM'd every agency i dm oh, okay celebrities i dm'd hairstylists anybody that i admired and i was like hey let me assist for you let me that's awesome do your hair any um agency i said let me be on your assistant roster let me take any free work that nobody wants to do and then um once you get on their radar and you start working with them it all kind of trickles down do you ever send emails as well? Or is it just all DMs through Instagram? Emails are way more professional. Okay. But I would, if I couldn't find an email, I would do Instagram. Have you done any jewelry? Like, um, did hair and makeup for people that are showcasing jewelry they're selling? I think so. So, okay. Uh, I just asked because one of my friends, she is going to the LA hair and makeup, or I think it's a uh, special effects school, which is, uh -huh. I don't know if they're currently open yet, but I saw 
somebody she did a really cool face makeup for a jewelry person like really interesting jewelry so I was just curious about that that's really cool no I haven't okay so now with Jessica Alba how long have you been doing her hair now um uh, I've been I've been with Jessica for about two years okay and well, about two and a half years and for and that's for LA Finest um we just did I did one season of LA's Finest yeah okay does she does she pay for her hair services if she's on a show or does the union pay for it? Um, the production company. So gotcha. I work with, um, I want to say Sony. Okay. And Sony and then the production company, they pay. Okay. Now, where are you at now? How long have you been a part of the union? I just, because we wrapped our show literally two weeks before COVID hit. Oh, okay. And we wrapped our show. I went two weeks later and got signed into the union, paid my dues and then COVID hit. So I've been officially part of the union. What are the dues for the union? Um, you pay quarterly, but to sign up for the union is like $6,000. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah. And to sign up would be if you're, you're not even sure if you'll be accepted or is this no, that's once accepted? you get accepted. Okay. And is it 6,000, not a year though, right? No, just oh, okay. That's a, that's a big uh, now tell me, what are the benefits of being a part of the union other than being on film? Um, the union, because as you know, being a hairstylist, we are, we do all of our own insurance, all mm -hmm. of that stuff. But being the union, you get insurance, retirement, the 401k, oh, that's amazing awesome. health insurance. Yeah. And then tax paying the taxes and then it's also protection for me for you right because you've heard of uh -huh. unions where like the teacher union it's i don't want to say like it's hard to let go of somebody but it does protect your rights yeah definitely the security is amazing now do you get health insurance even if you're not on a show you have to have a certain amount of hours a year okay when you do mm -hmm. um so and then i'm sorry because you just got into the union now, this is where I'm asking, because when I talked to you earlier, you said that you would work Monday through Friday, almost 75 hours a week, mm -hmm, yeah. driving from Huntington Beach to LA, yeah. <laughs> like not going to bed until 4 a.m., yeah. sleep a little bit, and then start your day at um, the salon, right? Yes. And how many yeah. days... Would you do that just Saturdays or Saturdays and Sundays? Um, I just did my salon days on Saturdays during the show because Sundays were the day that I swore to my children. Awesome. Nothing, nothing, yeah. no phones, no anything. Yes, that's great. So. How many clients do you do in one day? Um, I don't know. My days are normally about 10 to 12 hours. Okay. I try to double or triple book. So. And do you have one assistant? I do have one assistant. Mm -hmm. And then with the double and triple booking, do you actually pay for a second chair at the salon? Um, I do now because I'm only working a couple days a week. Okay. But, but no, we would just use a chair that was open for the day. But how was it during COVID for you down there? Um, it was, it was awful. I mean, I think all of us struggled, you know, it was, we went from having our regular lives, our regular clients to not being able to work at all. Yeah. I saw that they were allowing hairstylists and nails techs to work on clients, but you could not work indoors, right? Well, yeah, that's what the set, the first time they shut us down, we weren't able to work at all. It was, um, we were shut down for, I want to say two months. Mm -hmm. And then we got to open up for a couple weeks and then they shut us back down. And they were like, but you can work outside, but you can't do any chemical services or shampooing. Ugh. So good luck with that one. And then, so you weren't able to work on any shows during that time either, right? No, this production was completely shut down as well. Gosh. And then when did you guys open up? Um, I want to say beginning of September. We opened oh up my there. God. We opened up in June. 
June 18th. You did, and you've been open since. Yeah. That's crazy. Any crazy guidelines? Or um, clients can't wait in the, in the salon. They have to wait outside. We sanitize before and after each client. We can't have them bring in drinks. Um, I mean, it's super restricted. I feel pretty safe because I also have my own studio space within this big salon, but okay. also we keep, we keep it pretty clean. Like even outside of my little studio, like everybody's six feet apart, like everybody, we, we keep it pretty clean, but that's where we're at now. Yeah. I mean, that's been, I mean, our industry is one of the cleanest industries, you mm -hmm. know, like that's why we go to schools to learn how to do this safely. So. Yeah. Now, are you working on a show right now? I'm not. I'm um, still working with Jessica, um, but we're doing all of her. She owns The Honest Company. What is that? Um, it started off as like a clean, um, like baby line, like diapers. Oh, and yeah. Products, and now it's also beauty and cleaning things and home stuff. Oh, that's um, great. So we do a lot of shoots for that. And okay. we, do, we just finished doing a couple week press junket like virtually mm -hmm. um so i was with her a couple days a week for that do you i don't know if you want to talk uh, disclose any of their names but do you have any other celebrities that you work with um my first big celebrity was paris hilton oh yeah That's um nice. i worked with her for about three years oh, okay was that for a show or anything in particular no that was just freelance that was just for oh. her her day to day. It's amazing how much stuff that they go to that they have to be done up for. So. Yeah. Uh, now you have two kiddos. You have an eight year old son and a five year old daughter. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me how you balance your work life and your home life. Um, or if that's like week to week. <laughs> I mean, you know how it is being a mom. It's definitely oh, yeah. week to week. And yeah. Definitely some days are way better than others. And yeah. Some days are like, I'm not doing a good job at all juggling any of this, mm -hmm. but, um, it takes a village. It does it. Um, I have so much love and help around us. That mm -hmm. it, it takes, um, my mom helps, um, their dad is, helps me 50, 50 with everything. That's you great. know, like, we literally sit down with our schedules every single week. So especially during the show, I was working a hundred hours a week. So he would work his full time. He owns a company. He owns two okay. companies. Oh, okay. He would work his butt off, come home and be a stay at home dad as well. You know? So yeah, it takes a very good partner. It takes a village. It takes a babysitter that you trust. Oh yeah. Um, what's going on with schooling? Cause you guys are doing at home schooling now, right? Yeah. So the kids, um, right now it's kind of a blessing that I can't really work that much in production because I'm working a few days in LA. I'm working maybe one or two days at the salon and then I'm fully homeschooling the kids right now until they're allowed to go and in back to school. Does your five-year-old, are they doing anything with the computer? Like it's Zoom? All, it's all Zoom. Really? Even, yeah. How is your daughter handling that? Like, does she understand that? You know, it's, she's actually doing a little bit better than my son, my eight okay. year He's like, this is awful. He's like, sits there and like, he has his like, knees up and, oh. you know, but my daughter, it's kindergarten. So it's like songs and yeah. stuff, you know? but like the things you don't even like realize as a mom, I'm like, Everly, please get your legs off of the computer screen. Like oh. <laughs> everybody can see up your dress, <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, or like, it's just like the things that you don't even you never thought you'd be saying. <laughs> yeah. Do you have other moms that you talk about this, like the hardship of schooling and work? Um, yeah, a lot of my friends are moms. I okay. talk to clients about it who are moms, but yeah, I guess so. Do you guys, have you ever scheduled anything like a get together with any of your moms with doing social distancing with the kids? Not a ton right now. Yeah. No, I'm still, um, we're all still pretty careful with COVID, but my sister's a mom. So oh, like my sister sweet. and my um, sister-in-law are both moms. So I've had, since the shutdown in March, I've had three get togethers 
one was with a mom melinda she's so sweet she has a son that's pretty close to my boys age and then she has an older girl but you know they were my kids can't wear masks they don't understand that just yet (laughs) they wore masks and we just hung out outside and it was it was good but it was also sad it was sad yeah it was just so hard. It's so sad. Oh, God. I feel like I'm yelling at them all the time. Like, don't touch that. Don't touch that. Oh, I know. Oh, uh, yeah. Six feet. Six feet. It's just awful. It was great seeing them. Um, but I think people are really missing community right now. Yeah, of course. Um, now, so where are you at? So you are working right now. You've slowed down doing shows. Yeah. Do you have any projects, big projects coming up? TV shows? No, uh -uh. not right now. I think our shows um, probably won't start production until maybe next year, the ones that I was working on. How do they, do you reach out to people or now that you're part of the union, they're like, oh, hey, I want Brittany for this show. Yeah, it would go that way. Um, I'll probably follow Jessica from her shows and movies right now oh that's great um, just because she's my buddy so oh that's really I'll sweet. just do that um and then it's all about also how you act on set and who you meet and mm-hmm. people will want to work with you and I n- artists yeah and so this is a very naive question and it's one that I wrote um because you do seem so nice and humble. Do you feel like you have to have a different face when you're on set? Um, I feel like that is my cross to bear because I don't. Okay. Um, I'm like this all the time. And um, I feel like it's helped me a lot get jobs because I'm a different kind of energy than a lot of people in LA. Yeah. But also like people are like, <laughs> You're a lot. So I think I love this person. I love this person. Oh. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> you, you'll like, I remember when I first started the show, I was like, these people are all grumpy and jaded. And they're like, you will too. <laughs> you'll become this. And does like, that, no, it doesn't seem like it bothers you though. Or does it bother you? Um, I think at times it did, you know, because I walk in and be like, hi, did it yeah. beautiful, did it done. Maybe I, don't talk to us. But um, I think once you realize that like, this is who I am mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm not going to change just because I'm working in LA or I'm not going to be mean. I don't know. I just, I don't know. And I still get to leave LA and come back to Huntington and be with my family and be with my friends. Yeah. You know, this is my, this is my real world, you know, so I'm not going to change who I am because I'm Yeah. Is the vibe for at Huntington beach compared to LA? really different yeah Huntington Beach is just very laid back very mellow you know I've I've been there I think I've been there once or twice I really liked it yeah I loved it it was just nice now how about like where do you want to go from here I think I asked you that before um I would love to I'm huge into like goal setting. So I still have a few more goals that I'm trying to cross off my list. Um, And you were talking about your vision boards too, right? Yes. Yes. Do you have pictures of those? I really don't. I can probably send you a picture I took. um, Okay. Of one of my vision boards I have. Um, I used to make the physical ones like um, January 1st every year for years. Sit down and that. I'd make a vision board for the year. Now, because of time and space, I keep them on my phone. Mm-hmm. Or I, um, if you follow Sarah Centrella, oh. um, who's actually mutual friends with. Um, yes, yeah, Madonna was on her podcast. Yes, that's how I found that. That's so funny, her. okay. But um, she recommends doing Pinterest vision boards and um, future boards, she calls them. But I keep them on there. I have um, a folder in my phone called vision boards so anytime I need the inspo I go to that and remind myself but I'm huge in that I'm very into the law of attraction into oh, cool. um like your thoughts create your life so. have you changed your vision vision board since COVID yes 
COVID, as awful it, as it's been, it kind of told, it taught me how to reprioritize my life. I went from working a hundred hours a week to zero, to being mm -hmm. a stay-at-home mom, to being like a homeschool teacher. So COVID's kind of taught me that as much as I am still goal oriented and I still have my goals for my career, like there is a lot more I want to do with my kids and my life. Do you do anything special with them since you said that Sundays is just dedicated to them? That's how it was during the show. Now, okay. Ever, not every day is dedicated. To them. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, a big thing that I was guilty of, especially with social media, is always being on my phone. Yeah. You know, because I'm always, and I, I swear to them, I'm like, I'm working, I'm working. Like, I'm text, especially within our industry, I'm always texting clients. Yeah. Back. Yeah. So I'm having to put boundaries on that, not text back right away. Um, Do your kids but, have phones? They don't. No. Okay. No. Um, but that's been one rule is I'm working on. And I've voiced it to my son. Like, mommy's working on, I'm knocking my, be on my phone when I'm with you. That's great. I actually told her the other day, I was like, you're going to work on this and this. I'm going to work on um, not being on my phone when I'm with you. And he's like, I really appreciate that. Oh, that's so <laughs> sweet. Because you don't, you don't realize it and they see it and that's, I need to be more present. So it's, yeah, it's definitely hard, especially if you have your own business, because I get caught being on my phone. I mean, and my kids are too. They see something shiny and the uh, picture changes, everything like that. But I do know if I am on it and they need my full attention right then and there, I try my hardest to get off of it immediately so that they know that I'm not ignoring them. Totally. Because it is hard to be like, wait, one second, one second. I, Let me finish yeah. This. Yeah. But if I don't even have it with me, it really helps me. <laughs> Has that been really hard for you to be away from your phone? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which sounds awful, but it, it's a thing and social media is a thing. And mm -hmm. it, even just the mindless scrolling or having it with me and being like, let me take a picture of this. Let me take a picture of yeah. this. Oh, and it, I don't have as much time as I want with them. So every time, like my time needs to be a hundred percent present with them. Is there anything special that you do that you've done with them recently? Um, we, well, because of COVID, there wasn't much that we could do. Yeah. So we were doing a lot of beach days. Oh, cool. We would go to the beach. Um, I was making them, which they'd get annoyed, but I was making them have outdoor dinners every night. Oh, that's nice. We'd sit outside and play. Um, we, I got a bunch of board games. So oh, play. that's cool. Why would they get annoyed with that? Because um, I make them earn like any screen time that they have. Oh, okay, that's and good. So they like in the middle of their screen time, it's like outside, no screen time. Oh, that's great. Yes. But it's actually working for all of us. So. I know. Um, I keep on asking moms, what? Because since I have twin boys, it's really difficult for me to even do anything. Yeah. And they go two different directions, so I don't even take them. I think the outdoor play parks are open but I won't even take them by myself because they'll just go separately no of course <laughs> um at what point do you can I like or what point were you able to take your children on your own and like oh okay they can play in the the outdoor play park so what what age was that for your son and for your daughter I felt like things started getting easier around like three and a half Okay, cool. So I, have, four. so I have, I like, still though, I still feel like when I go to Target, my eight-year-old, I'm like, sit in the cart. And he's like, yeah. I don't fit. <laughs> like, I don't care. I can't have both of you try. Yeah. It. So I have like a year and a half to two years. That is what I've heard. <laughs> and I, it's not, yeah. yeah. And it's not like I'm not enjoying it. I'm really trying to enjoy it, but I am seriously, I told Alex, my husband, it's like, I don't like being home on my days off. Like no. I like, I used to, cart the kids around in the stroller to target or I'd go to a plant shop just to get out but even yeah. before the kids I was never home I was always like driving around no it is honestly being at home with my kids as amazing as it is it is so much harder than being at work mm -hmm. like it is it is hard it's being at home and I feel like I'm constantly nagging at them and yeah are they fighting do they fight a lot 
Yeah, they do. They're like best friends, but only for so long. And then they fight over something. And, but I, then they're friends again and I'm still angry. <laughs> God, <laughs> yes. They're gang up on you. <laughs> yes. Yesterday, Jack, he got, he got into this hitting thing. Like he'll hit Hunter with toys and Hunter, he's the firstborn. He's also smaller than Hunter. <laughs> And he'll go ah, and like hit Hunter on the head, and I can hear Hunter crying. And Hunter doesn't do anything. Oh my God. So now I'm trying to do the two minute timeout where I just put Jack in the bedroom and I shut the door, and he's still Gosh. giggling. He just doesn't care. That's my youngest too. She I literally like, would be like so mean to her older brother. I yeah, I even took because I had to reprimand him a lot yesterday, and I felt really bad. And I even asked Alex. I always get nervous about this. I'm like is is jack gonna be a bully when he's older is he gonna be like a bad not a not like a bad bad kid but you know what i mean and he's yeah. like no <laughs> he's like chill out it's hard he's, though it is like, like, it's just a bad sign. i know it's just, just like oh my god he's gonna be awful <laughs> oh my gosh no my my daughter's always been the same way they're just more expressive and so yeah kids, at two, they don't know how to express their feelings. Oh, either. totally. Yeah. Kid, my daughter, she literally has been like that since she was born, like just so strong willed. Mm -hmm. She'd pick on her older brother and be like, You're a baby. You're oh, a baby. And then um, just recently she got in trouble for something and she mm -hmm. literally was like, Well, it's not my fault you're raising a strong woman. <gasps> and she's fine. Wow. She's fine. You know, so I. How do you explain that? Like, how do you talk to her about that? I don't know. I, I don't know. But I literally was like, well, do you know what that makes me? And she's like, what? I was like, a stronger woman. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Dropping the mic. <laughs> she didn't care. She just walked away. Yeah. Like, whatever. I felt, I felt good. Yeah. You felt good. That's good. Cause you are the stronger woman. <laughs> I was like, I got her. <laughs> um, so now, I mean, you've done a lot and I feel like you're probably going to keep at it. Right. Yeah, that's the goal. Uh, now, where can, what what kind of message would you have for the audience? Because mostly I think the audience that listens are hairstylists. Yeah. So do you have any message for them as being a hairstylist and then also being a celebrity stylist on shows? Um, for being a hairstylist, especially if you're starting out, it's be patient. Um, mm -hmm. I think we're, we always assume that when we get out of school, we're going to be super rich and it takes a long time mm -hmm. so be patient um work your butt off that's also the thing with hairstylists is we kind of like to let it come to us but mm -hmm. you have to work your butt off you have to work for free if you have to um you have to know your worth though and mm -hmm. you know um like i said like write down your goals make vision boards put that's it out cool. there and know what you want and follow all your dreams and don't yeah. give up even if they sound crazy i mean i never thought 15 years ago when i was at the salon i would be doing paris hilton and jessica oh, alba and great. real housewives and working on tv shows i never ever thought that and it's still like pinch me moments but mm -hmm. i put it out there. And I was like, I'm going to do this. Like awesome. I literally, I wanted to work in New York. So I put it out there. I reached out to anybody I could and put yourself out there. I am surprisingly very introverted mm -hmm. and I had to step out of my comfort zone. I still do all the time by texting people, emailing people. And yeah. they're going to say no more times than they say yes. Yeah. And when you said the New York, was that the Dolce & Gabbana? Um, I worked at New York Fashion Week for a few years and oh, then cool. one time I did get asked to work um, and do a Dolce & Gabbana fashion show. Which I think I saw that on your Instagram. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. that's great. And then I have one last question because yeah. you seem very self-motivated. Do you have any mentors? Um, I, I do a lot of, I listen to a lot of podcasts. A lot of my time is by myself in the car. So I listen okay. to a lot of podcast mentors. Um, my salon owner, her name's Deanna. Okay. Um, she mentored me on how to be a good business person. Oh, that's great. My mom mentored me on how to be, have good customer service and how to be oh. a good person. 
something, you know? Awesome. I, what podcast do you listen to? Cause I'm always down to try new ones. Well, I love yours now. By the way. Oh, well that's sweet. Yeah. Cause you, how many you've listened to, was it episode five? I can't I remember exactly the numbers, but I listened to a few of the different. Okay. They're all so good. So my noise, my uh, voice isn't annoying. <laughs> no, no, no. And you do such a good job. It was very oh, good. good. Well, thank you. That really means a lot. Um, and then what's the other podcast you listen to? I listen to so many different ones. Um, I do like Sarah Sanchez. Okay. About her manifesting. Um, there's, I don't know. There's a bunch of different ones I listen okay. to. I can text them to you. Yeah, I would love to see that. Um, so guys, this is this is my interview with Brittany Ryan, celebrity hairstylist and mom. So I'm so glad that we could talk a lot about that. Thank if you. you'd like to, yeah, if you'd like to learn more about her, please check out her Instagram, Brittany Ryan Hair. And you guys, she is an open book. So if you're interested in being a part of the local 706 union for makeup and hair for film and television, please contact her. Or if you're curious about her vision board, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or anything, just any questions about anything, please DM me or email oh, me. Or well, that's anything. great. Well, Brittany, it's so good talking to you. It was so good talking to you. All awesome. right, I will talk to you later, okay? Okay, thank Bye. you. Bye. So guys, that was my interview with Brittany. You guys, and my belief is, even if you want to hustle, you hustle, you want to get yourself out there, you want to get known, I still believe this, I truly believe this, you don't have to be pretentious, you don't have to be mean, you don't have to be a snob, you can actually be a very cool and a very chill and a very kind person. If you guys would like to know more about Brittany, please check out her Instagram at Brittany Ryan Hair and shoot her a DM. If you have any questions about the show or even being a part of the union or even the freelance work that she's done. You can also check out my website, www.hairp.salon for more info under the podcast section, episode 12. Well, that's it for now. So be safe. Be healthy and above all, be hopeful. This is your hair piece session with Emily. I'm your host, Emily Mazur, AKA Portland hairstylist. Show written by Emily Mazur, sponsored by Ziba Hub. Ziba Hub, a career app for beauty professionals where you can find jobs, explore events, and build community. And editing by 127 Media House.